Hi again once everybody. Um, today I wanted to concentrate on something I think that's very important. That is the, the panel, the power distribution, where the fuses are. Uh, I received some, I guess, some uh, comments about how to figure out the fuses and which one gets blown and which one you should be looking for. I think it's a very important concept. Let's take example. This is actually for Toyota. Toyota Camry. And you'll see everything basically is the same. Everything basically is the same. How a fuse works, I think we're all familiar with it. There's a certain amount of current it lets flow into that circuit. Once it exceeds that ampage, once it exceeds that limit of more than it's rated for, it is a protection device. It has to open, it has to blow to protect the loads. So that's the main um, objective, or the purpose obviously, of anything, a circuit breaker, a fusible link that we spoke about, uh, anything like that, or inertia switch, it's to protect something. Now, let's start over here. These are fuel injectors. Okay, this is ignition for the spark, this is for the fuel obviously, and this is for our computer. Here over here is something called for the EVAP system. Okay? Obviously that's when you have fuel. What you create from that, the byproduct of that is vapor. So we don't want vapor into the atmosphere, into the ozone layer, so we put it into a separate, let's say, container, the canister, charcoal canister to put everything in there. So besides that over here we have let's say instrument panel cluster and the body control module which is another module it's a very important module which communicates to this one over here the powertrain control module he's the boss but he sometimes tells the communicates to the boss what's going on so they're communicating back and forth send he sends him an email he sends him an email so instrument cluster is the dashboard the lights so let's say we have a problem, and this is why I started with this in the first place. Let's say we have a problem, okay? And it was a, it actually was a true problem. Now let's say we come over here. Let's say our turn signals don't work. We put on the hazard lights, they don't work. Now, many, many, some of the people, which is not many, but many people will go, they go through all the fuses, checking all the fuses. How long will that take? 15, 20 minutes. Why? Because there's not only fuses by the under the hood, there's also fuses by the dashboard. When you open up the door, there's all there's a panel, usually. So there's about maybe 20, 30 more fuses. So not understanding, well, obviously there's a fuse that's its purpose is for the turn signals, right? Now, if you take out the wiring diagram, and this is a, I can, a block diagram, this is, not the, this is not the component level, where the components are. This is a rough system. That's why you should start off with this one, and then work your way. As you advance yourself with schematics, you should advance yourself later on. Then you go to something like this, which is the actual schematic of the, of the, of the fuses, of the fusible links of the relays so gradually work your way up as you feel comfortable so anyway we always start off and say okay like we said we know we have a problem right where's the fuse we think it's the fuse right so starting over here let's just go through the systems very quickly and then you'll see the point that i'm trying to trying to convey okay we know we have a battery obviously we know we have a, a big fuse over here 175 amps okay if we come over this way california only and this is an air injection system for california we're not dealing with california because we're not in the state of california that means we forget about this route over here this circuit but we do come down here we do see a big fuse as you can see over here we came down here to the red wire going again to the red wire we come to this on the hood fuse block all this dotted um area denotes this is the part of all this fuses are in a fuse panel over here 
under the hood, like we just said. So we come to a red wire. We come to a fuse. That's a biggie. Ignition A. That's his, its identification, let's say. And fuse is 40 amps. A biggie. 40 amps is a lot. 50 amps is a lot. 30 amps is a lot. 10 amps. But 7.5 amp is not a lot for radio circuits or things like that. But we know we're dealing with something with a lot of current. When you see 40 amps, 30 amps for the blower motor, the fan motor, they call it. So we did, so red wire, we come out here, right? And then we come out here into B11, the terminal, the connector over here, which is a red wire. And I was asked in the comment why I use the camera I'm moving around. Well, because I have to show the... the uh, the viewers, right? The, the terminal, the connectors. And if I hold it like this, are you going to see that connector? Are you going to see that that number that I'm referring to? Are you going to be able to read that? You're not going to be able to read that because many people use the schematics, believe it or not, as a reference when they go out there to to, to try to troubleshoot on their own. And, I, and they, they tell me, I can't even read that. Well, if you can't read that, that's because I have to try to focus in on it. Yes, the camera is moving, but that's part of it. That has, you know, it, that's just part of it. So, as you see over here, B11, that's the term of the connector. You see this connector? The symbol. And then we go to red wire, but a different terminal, obviously. So, the current is flowing through this big fuse over here. There's 12 volts over here. There's 12 volts over here. We see over here a little triangle with a, with a, a D in it. That means this part of the schematic is continued somewhere else. If we want to find where this is, is goes to, to ignition C fuse, we have to find also the other triangle with a D in it. That's where it's continued. Nevertheless, we still continue in this path. We come to the ignition switch. This block dying with the ignition switch, we come to B1. B1 go is the connector, and then we come to oh, the terminal, come to the red wire, still red, red, red. Which position are we in right now? We have to be in the start position to allow current through all these fuses, okay? All these fuses, so far. So in the start position, how much voltage should we have here? Let's start from the beginning. 12 volts here, 12 volts here. After the fuse, how much? 12 why just a simple a simple jumper right we shouldn't lose any voltage how about from this terminal to this terminal how much voltage should we have over here 12 volts here we should have 12 volts over here why should we have the same voltage why and why should we have the same voltage over here so from you're telling me in other words from this pink wire to this terminal over here we should have the same voltage why is that because it's just a wire we shouldn't lose any voltage if we lose voltage if we have 12 volts here and we lose we have 10 volts here there's a problem between here and here we should not lose anything so 12 volts here and 12 volts over here a quick summary of what's going on over here so we come to this fuse as you can see ecm fuse 15 amps again there's a continuation of the schematic to which letter what does it say in the triangle a so we have to find a but we're not concerned with that as you can see over here, there are many branches over here. That means the current that flows, and remember, current flows, not voltage. Well, voltage is a reference point for you to measure. It is a, it is a, it is a, a electromotive force, they call it. It is the pressure that pushes the flow of electrons. But voltage does not flow from here. Current flows. So we come over here. We come to this another connector, a pink one, right? A connector of C1 and a terminal of A9. See, you have to see A9, a pink wire. Now, the current flows, whatever the current is, we know it's going to be less than 15 amps. Maybe it's 10 amps, maybe it's 12 amps. We know there's many branches for it to go to the fuel injectors, to the, to the ignition control panel for a spark, to also the computer. The connector C1 of the computer. Which pin of the computer? What does it say here? That's why I have to zoom in. I can't even see myself sometimes. 19. Pin 19 of C1. So, those of you using this as a reference, this is for Toyota. Powertrain control module. A powertrain control module over here. You're going to see at pin 1, if you go to pin 1, you should have 12 volts. Pin 19, I'm sorry. Pin 19, you should have 12 volts. Okay, 
So 12 volts here, 12 volts, every branch has 12 volts. We should not lose any voltage through any of these branches. If we do, there's a problem. So we come over here, 12 volts here, right? We come into this pink one and we go out here, all these, this is feeding all of these. Our problem is not with that. Our problem has nothing to do with fuel injector. So we should not even be checking this fuse. You understand that? Our problem has nothing to do with sp with a uh, spark. Our problem is to do a hazard lights still go on. Does that have to do anything with, with hazard lights? Look what it's connected to. Fuel injector, the PCM, ignition coil. Nothing to do with those. I wouldn't even check that. So the person who I, who I was working with checked all the fuses. 15, 20 minutes went by to check all the fuses for no reason, right? At an hourly rate of 120, whatever, $130 an hour, and you're spending 20, 20 minutes checking all the fuses when you could just take out a wiring diagram or look on the fuse on the fuse box on the cover, at least at least try to narrow it down. That's just that's just almost unacceptable to a customer that you spend that much that much time with an hourly rate that much. So anyway, this goes over here. This has nothing to do with our problem. Let's come let's go down here. In the start position we are a pink one and C five connector C five, a pink one. Again a pink one, the same pink wire. We didn't lose any voltage, did we? 12 volts now we come to what we were chasing our destination these are the gauges gauges mean the instrument cluster do we have a problem with the instrument cluster no the lights go on the instrument cluster right therefore take this fuse out of the picture do we have anything any problem to do with inflatable rest, uh, restraint system no we have nothing we have no pro our problem is right here he's our culprit right here he's responsible so turn fuse uh, something I, I even drew over it then maybe 10 I, I think I drew over it but anyway it's a 20 amp fuse going in here pink the connector a2 to a pink wire going to the multifunction switch which is obviously responsible for the lighting system the lighting control module so 12 volts here how much should I get over here at this side right here I should get 12 volts how much should I get over here 12 volts how much should I get over here at this fuse? 12 volts. How much should I get over here? 12 volts. Until you know it automatically. If, but, that's the problem. We have 12 volts over here, 0 volts over here. What does that mean? It's blown, the fuse, but also we're not connected back to the battery. So, instead of spending 20 minutes going over all the fuses, and that's only part of the diagram, you take out the fuse, and you look at it, and you say, okay, where is my problem multi multi-function switch right here i'm looking for this fuse right and that's the problem anyway let me continue in another one uh thanks for watching joe electronic schematics for auto you'll find many videos uh, for european cars asian cars uh, power windows power locks um i was asked a question about the motor and 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 the for the door when you unlock the door it's not two separate motors that's the video that I did. It's one. It's always one motor, but it's a bi-directional motor. So, depending on the polarity, let's say of, of the battery, let's say, one a motor can go clockwise, and the same motor can go counterclockwise. So you're using the same motor. We don't want to use too many parts. We want to save money. The manufacturer wants to save money and try to put in as less parts as possible, right? So he can charge you more. That's life, right? So anyway, it's one more. So see all of those. And uh, uh, for students who want to know about transistors, I broke it down to everything with Ohm's Law, formulas. Please uh, see those. Thanks.